The FBI has met their ultimate adversary, a criminal who can control people's minds, forcing them to do anything he wants. No one can escape his power, which he uses to force others to hurt themselves. How can you stop a killer who controls your thoughts? That's a really good question. Let's find out. Pusher, or Rob Modell, calmly walks through a grocery store, only filling his basket with energy drinks. He is followed by two men, and upon checking out, is arrested. Frank Burris calls him Pusher and asks for a police escort in chains to keep safe while bringing him in. While Deputy Kerber is driving, Rob keeps repeating Cerulean Blue, pushing Kerber's mind to not see the blue truck coming their way. The deputy drives straight into it as Rob braces himself. An injured burst calls upon Mulder and Scully of the X-Files to help with apprehending Rob again. Burst explains that the terrible accident mortally wounded Kerber, but Rob sustained only minor injuries, got out, and again pushed the dying deputy to unlock his chains. He escaped and is at large. Burst says... Pusher called him a few weeks ago, confessing to a string of contract killings going back two years. He called only to boast about his accomplishments because the deaths were listed as unknown reasons. Scully asks if Rob had any connection to the dead deputy, and Burst describes how he kind of hypnotized Kerber by repeating how calming the color cerulean blue is. The oncoming truck company went by that name. Burst says that Rob likes to leave clues, and he wrote on the police car, N-I-N-O-R. Mulder reads it backwards and knows it means samurai without a master. They are researching Ronin magazines, and they notice a bruise on the clerk, Holly's face. She confides to them that she was attacked recently. Scully wants to know what they are looking for in the magazines. Mulder says, advertisements. He goes on to say, the science of suggestion is used in advertising. Images and words are designed to plant thoughts in your head, manipulating the viewer into buying a product. Rob has an uncanny ability to push his will onto others in a similar fashion. Mulder finds a common ad in all the magazines dating back to when the murders started. It says, solve problems OSU, which is a Japanese word meaning to push. The number is for a pay phone, so they watch it on a stakeout. The phone rings back, and the caller says he knows he is being watched. Then Rob calls on a game of cat and mouse, telling Mulder to follow the breadcrumbs. They check the last number dialed out, and it's a nearby golf course. So they set up surveillance on that place the next day. Sure enough, Rob is golfing with some Japanese men and notices a SWAT force in the distance. He makes a run for it, but the team pursues him. Officer Collins finds him with a sniper rifle. However, Rob is able to manipulate Collins into pouring gasoline all over. The team finds Collins trying to light a fire and begging to be stopped. Scully gets an extinguisher, but it's too late. A blaring horn in the distance leads Mulder to Rob, lying exhausted in his car. He tells Mulder, bet you five bucks, I get off. At his arraignment, Rob is accused of 14 murders. Mulder testifies, stating the deaths were attempted because Rob confessed and knew crime scene details. The defense attorney responds that since all the victims were nowhere within reach of Rob, he couldn't be responsible for their deaths. Mulder counters, saying Rob was near every scene and willed the victims to do so. Well, that's a reach. Mulder explains Rob was able to mesmerize his victims, convincing them to take horrible actions. Mulder goes on using the example of Collins with the flaming accident. Because Rob confessed, the FBI asked that he be held until they conclude their investigation. Rob then mesmerizes the judge and is set free. He then mockingly asks Mulder for his five bucks. Burst threatens Rob, saying he'll catch him no matter what the cost. Later, Scully and Mulder discuss the case history of Rob Modell. They learned he joined the military and had an average life. He'd try hard to be exceptional. 
His last job was a store clerk. He applied to the FBI, but failed his psych exam due to being a sociopath and perceiving humans as objects. He is paranoid of authority, yet wants to be in charge. Rob is a grandiose liar, never having experienced any of the worldly adventures he's claimed. But he certainly can put the whammy on people, as Mulder calls it. He suggests that maybe this new ability happened suddenly, about when his crime spree began. Rob was a pesky mouse who suddenly grew into a bear, and now he's playing with them. Rob enters FBI headquarters and writes on paper, Pass, which he puts in his lapel. Then he puts the whammy on security, gaining access to the entire place. He greets Holly, the computer clerk, and pushes her to upload the personal files on Mulder. Director Skinner sees something suspicious and enters the room. Rob tells him everything is fine and to leave. Skinner grabs the intruder and tells Holly to call security. Rob pushes his will on Holly to control her thoughts, telling her this man attacked her and is now confronting him. She sprays mace in Director Skinner's face, then beats him when he goes down. Rob makes his escape. Holly is apologizing later in Skinner's office, saying she had no control over what she was doing. And he's going to say the same thing the next time she asks for a raise. The FBI gets a search warrant for Rob's apartment. They look through his things. He has a DVD as Fengali, a movie about a man controlling people by gazing into their eyes. All Rob eats are protein drinks. Scully finds a prescription for epilepsy and guesses a sudden onset of seizures could be caused by a brain tumor. Mulder mentions that the occurrence of brain lesions has been linked to psychic ability, most notably psychokinesis, or pushing one's energy to make events happen. He surmises the drinks help replenish Rob's metabolic energy after it's depleted during pushing events. Scully brings up that tumors would make someone sick and weak, and then they remember at the golf range, Rob was probably too weak to escape. He confessed to the murders because he was dying and wants to go out in a blaze of glory. The phone rings and they put a trace on it. Burst answers and it's Rob. Burst must stay on as long as he can to get the phone number, but Rob is pushing him, saying how unhealthy he is with his weight, diet, and stress. Mulder sees where this is going and pleads with Burst to hang up, but he won't. He needs time to trace the call. Rob describes what is happening inside his blood vessels and body. Mulder and Scully desperately try to disconnect the line, but are stopped. With seconds to go to get the pinpoint location, Burst suffers a fatal heart attack. Mulder asks what Rob really wants, and he replies, a worthy adversary, and Burst didn't cut it. Rob tells him he'll make a perfect opponent because he's a top profiler and knows what make guys like him tick. Mulder says he knows he's dying and just wants to take a few more innocents with him before he goes. Scully has tried to revive Burst, but to no avail. Mulder calls him a sick bastard for killing Burst, only for fun. Rob laughs and says he's at a payphone and will be gone in seconds. The FBI notices the phone is near a hospital and his prescription is from there. With his now weakened state, that's where Rob is most likely headed. The SWAT team surrounds the perimeter. They learn Rob is scheduled for a 2.30 MRI. Mulder thinks he should go in alone because everyone has assault rifles and if Rob turns the men against each other, all havoc will ensue. Plus, he has chosen Mulder as his adversary, so this gives him what he wants. He goes in with the video gear so the team can monitor what happens at all times. Scully is scared for him and he lets her hold his gun because if he is pushed, he may do something terrible or someone else will with it. As Mulder approaches the ward, gunfire is heard. Rob stole the guard's gun. Scully tells him to pull up to the screen where they see Rob has a large brain tumor in his temporal lobe. Upon going through his chart, Mulder discovers he is dying with only days to live. When he turns around, Rob holds a gun and the transmission is lost. 
No one can use bullets with all the explosive oxygen in the ward, and tear gas is out of the question due to all the patients still in rooms. So Scully must go in to help Mulder without any weapon. She finds him sitting at a table playing a game with Rob, who has obviously put a whammy on him. She joins them, but Mulder is out of touch. Rob says he does not fear his own death. He is a warrior. He puts one bullet in the gun, one in six chances, and lets Mulder pull the trigger. That's the rule of the game. Scully protests and orders Mulder to hand over the gun, but he pulls the trigger and Scully freaks out. Now, a one in five chance. Mulder is then pushed to point the gun at Scully. Rob urges him to shoot her, saying she is a little spy and he should get revenge. Meanwhile, Scully is saying he can fight this. Mulder concentrates long enough to break the hold and tells her to run. Scully pulls the fire alarm, distracting Rob. Mulder uses this moment to shoot him. After he's down and the gun is empty, Mulder continues to pull the trigger to make sure. Rob lies in intensive care at the hospital. Doctors say he will die before ever regaining consciousness. Mulder glares at him in disdain as Scully walks in. Mulder tells her that he wasn't undergoing treatment for his tumor. It was operable all along, but he chose not to remove it. For the first time in his life, this loser had a superpower, and he didn't want to lose it. Mulder comments that Rob was always such a little man, and this ability to control and harm people made him feel big. They walk away, not giving such an evil person another minute of their time. We want to know your thoughts on this one. If you had the ability to push someone, would you use it for good or evil? Let us know in the comments below. And be sure to give us a like and subscribe to the channel so you'll be notified when our next video is posted. Thanks for watching.